going to talk a little bit about a program named QUCS. And we'll find out what that means in a minute. Uh, I want to tell you why I'm choosing that, what, what we're going to do with it, and uh, show you how you can upload it so you can uh, install the program on your own computer. Okay, the way to find it, I just use Google here. We're going to search for QUCS, which stands for Quite Universal Circuit Simulator. And uh, we'll open up their site. As you see, there's a lot of development going on with it. So uh, they're, they're keeping busy with this thing. And uh, it's an open source um, program. That means it's free. Uh, it means that uh, there are a lot of people working on it. And it works with both AutoCAD, I'm sorry, with uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS software. So it will work on um, OS X, I guess it's called. So it will work for all three of the main operating systems. Uh, and for me, you know, Linux is what I was wanting to use, and I had been using an earlier program, but this program uh, is is nice. Okay, uh, we'll look at some screenshots, and you can see what you can get out of it, and we'll be playing with one in the uh, next video. The next video will only be, uh, I'll only be going with DC simulation for a while. We'll be moving on into AC later on. And there's a whole lot of things that this can do that I don't even know. Uh, but we will get there as we get there. Okay, it's multilingual. That's one of the nice things about these open source programs is that there is no borders involved. Uh, we can all work on it. So those of you that have to put up with my broken English uh, while we're while I create these videos, um, and I'm a native English speaker, <laughs> but I have a funny accent, I guess. And uh, those of you that have to put up with my accent and and English, you can actually operate this program in whatever whatever language is your native language. Uh, I don't guess they have redneck yet, but. Anyhow, bad jokes. Uh, and as you can see, there's a download link on this. And you can download it for Windows and OS X. And you can also get it for all the versions of Linux. And I'll show you how I installed it on my Linux. Okay, they even have a roadmap here of what they're developing. The green is completed, or very close to being completed. The red is... Uh, or sorry, the blue is stuff that they're working on. But you see, and within each one of these, there's a check mark or an X. And X means they haven't got to it yet. And uh, most of that stuff that's an X, I don't, I don't know what they're even talking about. But uh, it's going to, uh, it's, it's developing, and it's developing very, very quickly. Okay, uh, one of the nice things about open source, lots and lots of developers. And they give credit to all the people that do work on it. So uh, you see that there's all these uh, people that have developed different parts of it. And there's a lot more. And they get their credit for their parts too. But these are the major developers of this program. And you see they're worldwide. And that's another reason why I like open source. If there's anything we all already need to be doing, and that is trying to work with each other instead of always being in these fights that the government seem to have us all into. So, I like this. Uh, there's translations, and you see that these various people have translated into various languages. Uh, the joke is that uh, what's a person that can speak two languages? You call them bilingual, three languages, trilingual, multiple languages, multilingual. Uh, they can only speak one language. American, <laughs> and unfortunately I fall in that, but a lot of people don't, and it's great, and so all these different languages are uh, available for this software. 
Uh, it has a uh, user manual built with it, and I will show you that in just a minute. First, I'll show you how I installed it on Linux. Since I run Ubuntu, uh, they have a thing called their software center. Type QUCS. It's the easiest way since we know why it is. And you see I've already installed it. All I had to do was just click on the thing and it was installed for me. Uh, so it's really easy to install in Linux. If you're installing it on um, the others, you will load up one of these binaries. And the binaries will give you an EXE file that you can install. So it works. And it works for all of it. Which is one of the advantages I have. Um, okay. So that's basically about QUCS. Uh, the next video will be, I'll show you how to use some of it. What little bits of it I know. Uh, there is some other advantages of why I've used it. Well, as a matter of fact, let's pull that up and I'll show you. One of the reasons, we'll just, we'll just open this one. And I was just learning and playing right here. But one of the reasons that I did it, if we go to components, oops, I pushed the wrong button, was these thing called lump components, which are our standard resistors and the other multilingual. We can have worldwide resistor or we can have the American squiggly uh, <laughs> resistor. But <laughs> there's a lot of other things that you can do. Uh, but some of the other components are sources. Now while we're doing, in my blog, while we're doing our pencil and paper models of transistors, we're going to use those type of uh, sources to talk about it. And it's an easy way for me to create the schematics, which is what I'll be using it for. Uh, it also, though, once we get past that and we get into the fancier simulations, You'll see that they have uh, nonlinear components, and we have PNP and NPN transistors. Uh, we have lots of various types of devices: our MOSFETs, our JFETs, op amps. So there's a lot of things that you can do with uh, those components, and they're modeled better than the way that we uh, we will model them at the start with our pencil and paper. So we can go all the way with this. It runs, in, internally, it runs PSPY, or runs SPICE, which is a famous program for simulating transistors. So it's internal in it. Uh, it can do a whole lot of things. Simulations, we have these various simulations that we can run. We're going to start out with the DC. Uh, we'll eventually go to the AC simulation. And then I'll be playing on my own with some of these others, and we'll see what we can do with uh, with various things, especially the sweep one. Once we get to uh, AC simulations, but we will uh, we will try various things with this. So we've got a long road ahead of us. Uh, let me show you one other thing that's in this. There's help. This getting started. Uh, it's really nice to. Uh, Tells you a pretty good help screen if you read it right, <laughs> which I didn't, unfortunately, but I finally got there. Uh, it tells you how you can use it. And uh, so it's a little better than what LibreCAD was when I first started with it, where there was no manual. I believe they've got a manual now. So we'll be able to uh, grow with this thing. And so I encourage everybody that's on my blog to load it. Again, I'm not a big fan of simulations at the start, and we're not we're going to use it for me to quickly draw the schematics to begin with, and then you can play with the simulation at the same time that you do it pencil on paper wise. Then once we get past that, we will uh, start using the real simulations, which is almost impossible to do without a computer. So this is a win-win in every direction. 
that's why I'm encouraging everybody to download this program and it's free all you're going to do is consume a little memory on your computer and uh, it's free and it's powerful appreciate you listening hopefully you got something out of this this is Gary Fox of 